As a salesman, you may have to say no to your customers from time to time. I mean, you have tried your best, you have been flexible, you have taken into consideration their needs, you have lowered your price, but you have reached a situation in which you just can't go lower. In this case, you need to say no. But of course, you can say it in a nice way. You don't have to abuse them, you don't have to be impatient, you don't have to be angry. Just do it in the right way because you never know what will happen in the future when you will need to get back to those customers in the future. So let me give an example of how one of my students, a sales representative, handled this situation. So he would listen to the customer and then after that, he would just look at them straight in the eyes. He would open his arms, he would bow a little and he would say, he would say well, I'm so sorry. You know, I would like to help you. Um, but unfortunately, my hands are tied and the only person who can make this decision is my boss. I mean, I have helped you. In fact, I have done, and then he will go on to say, I have done this, 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 and this, and I have given you this. So he will go back to talk about what he has given the client. So they will remember that he had already tried to help them. And then he would say, and I just have to go to my boss. Just give me 10, 15 minutes. I will try to talk to him to see if it's possible for him to lower the price. And then he would leave them and come back after 10 or 15 minutes and he would have this sad expression on his face and he would look a bit dejected and he would say, I'm sorry, the boss did not agree. He mentioned that we should not go farther below this price. Now, I call this the firewall technique because it's difficult for your customer to go through this wall. You know, they will feel embarrassed because you have tried your best to help them. You have shown them that you are on their side. In fact, you helped them. You were flexible. You reduced your price. And in the end, you went to your boss, but unfortunately, it did not work out. So in most situations, they would just change their initial expectations and accept what you had already agreed on. Now, let's say you have knowledge of how this salesman may react when he is selling something. Now, how can you use this knowledge in future situations? I mean, you know that the salesman may react like this. They will want to go to their boss when they don't want to just go below that price. Now, if you're going to the car dealership and you may encounter this situation as a buyer, how do you think you can react? Now, let me tell you what I did a couple of years ago when I was buying a car. So I went to the car dealership and I started to negotiate with a sales representative. And I knew that he could go farther below that price that he wanted me to pay. So because I had done my homework earlier, I mean, when you are going to buy a car, you just don't go into the car dealership and just, you know, pay for the car. You need to do your homework first. You need to check other car dealerships and you need to have an idea how much you can pay for that car. So I knew, I knew very well that he had not gone to the lowest level. So I was trying to press him to get a better price. So at one point of the conversation, he looked at me. Well, he did not really look at me. He looked somewhere else and he started rubbing his hands, hands together and he said to me, I'm sorry, I can't really help you, but I need to talk to my boss. Maybe he will be able to reduce the price. Just give me 10 minutes and I'll get back to you. Now, I knew exactly where he was going. So I looked at him for a moment. In fact, I looked at his hands for him to understand that I, that I knew what was going on, that I had read his nonverbal signals. And I said to him with a smile, Let's skip this part. You know, I happen to teach sales representatives every day and we talk about this strategy. So let's just skip it. And I had a nice smile on my face. So when he looked at me and he was shocked. I saw that consternation in his eyes. And then immediately I pulled out an offer I had from another car dealership because I did not want him to be too embarrassed. And I showed him the offer I had from the other car dealership and I asked him whether he could just go a bit below with his price. So then after that, he said to me, OK, I still need to talk to my boss. Well, I know I knew very well that he wanted to talk to his boss because he just wanted to save face. So I said to him, OK, no problem. Talk to your boss and let's get back to this conversation in 10, 15 minutes time. He came back to me after about 15 minutes and he told me that his boss had agreed to lower the price. Beautiful, isn't it? Now, there's one more thing you can do when buying a car. You know, let's say you have finished the greater part of the negotiation. You know exactly what price you will pay and you're about to sign the document. 
But just before doing that, you can ask for something more. You can ask for some additional accessories. You can even get car tires, I mean winter tires. And the reason why you will get it is because they know that you want to buy the car and they have a list of things that they can offer you. And in fact, in most situations, the sales representative will agree to give you those additional accessories or the car tires because they knew fully well that they had not gone to the lowest level in terms of price. So they still had something reserved for you. And they would agree because they want you to feel good. They want you to feel happy, satisfied. Because if you are satisfied, you will spread the news to other people and more people will come to that car dealership to buy cars.